Could God be a woman? Hey, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What? Does God exist? You might have needed to answer that question before you made this video. Uh, have you ever seen Dogma? The movie Dogma? God could be anything. This is a load of barnacles. And as far as I'm concerned, Mother Nature is, is God. Tons of societies have gods and goddesses. Like Athena, right? If you believe in God, why not believe that it could be a woman? Sounds like a lot of- Hoopla! Could the Antichrist be a woman? Yeah, I'm sitting right here. I heard that! Probably. Yep. We get mad. Women could be anything. <laughs> Wrong! They could be God, they could be the Antichrist. You certainly can't be both. It would only make sense that the most evil being has a vagina. Hoopla! All jokes aside, let's talk about this. I recently came upon an article from the New York Times that asked the question, Is God transgender? Not just the New York Times, but also the Huffington Post. They made the claim that Jesus himself was the first transgender man. Ooh, stay woke! Now, before I continue into this video, I don't want to tell the wrong message. The wrong message that I'm trying to express is that I hate gays, that I hate transgender people, that I don't think they're human, that I don't think women are valuable, all these other misnomers that people like to throw out at you. I'd also like to specify that I'm not trying to enforce some kind of sexist ideology that somebody's trying to hammer down individuals like I hate them. What I am trying to convey is that God is distinct in who he is, and he has perfectly laid out everything you need to know about him, who he is, his character, and his gender slash sex. If you'd like to know what I believe about the sexes, differentiation between the genders, male and female, nothing else, then I will address that in another video. We're moving on. So the real issue is not necessarily questioning what gender God is, but where does the authority to which you understand these things come from? In the case with these ladies, it's coming from individual preferences. You had the lady that was listing all the different gods and goddesses from different countries and nationalities, religions, faith, beliefs. But where does all that come from? And is there something that is outside subjectivism that is objective, that does not change, and isn't affected by somebody's opinion? Little known story. I have a 66 book called The Bible that has the inside scoop. Now I know what you're going to say. Dogma, as in dogmatic. Well, he's bringing up that Bible again. That's the thing. Something that is objective is obviously going to be exclusive. It's going to push away those things that are wrong for the things that are exceptionally right and true and good. Do you get mad when somebody says it's always wrong to rape? Are you bigoted against rapists? Ah, that's so exclusive. Are you rapists? Yeah, because it's true. It doesn't change. It will always be wrong to rape. We're moving on. So what does the Bible say? I am literally about to give you every single reference that I can think of that I have strewn all through the scriptures about what God's gender is. I'm going to be listing as many passages as possible, but I'm going to have to ask that you look at them yourselves because I'm going to rapid fire all of these at once because there is seriously so much material. Literally the whole Bible. After that, I'm going to be specifically talking about the purpose of why God is this specific gender. Another problem I've noticed is that the same people that make this claim that God is female are the same ones that have never opened the Bible once in their lives. You can easily take two seconds to open your Bible and every reference you see in there is always a reference to him being of the father, of the son, of the male vernacular. Not to mention the overwhelming fact that historically anybody who has any sense of theology has a basic understanding that God is Trinitarian. He is one in three persons. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is the Almighty. He is above all else. He is in charge of a creation. He is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He became a man in the person of Jesus Christ, 
who came and died for our salvation and did all these things just for you and me so that we could have salvation. Not only that, through his salvation, we have the Holy Spirit, which comes into us when we truly respond and believe in him and have a reestablished right relationship with him so that we can know him, grow with him, and be sanctified by him while we're still on this earth till he returns a second time to bring judgment on all evil. So what's the purpose? Obviously, God must be some tyrannical dictator who's trying to subvert women. <laughs> Wrong! The reality is that God has made both male and female distinct in their purposes. They are created that way by design. They are not higher or lower on value, but they are equipped differently to do better things. There are some things that women do better than men, and there are some things that men do better than women. But to demonstrate what God has perfectly designed in mind, specifically what works best for both male and female, God demonstrates his character and his position of authority through manhood. And specifically, he's put him in the head of the church, he's made pastors male, and he's also put man as the head of the household, which is the authority. Therefore, it transposes in the same way that God is the father, God is the head of the church, God is also the head of the family. Not to mention, in the beginning, he made Adam first. This is why God specifically says in Ephesians 5, for husbands to love your wives like their own body. And at the same time, women should esteem their husband. <music> Granted, some would say, hey, Jesus exemplified womanly characteristics. It's funny that those are the same people that cry that gender is a social construct, while at the same time they admit to innate features definitive of each sex. Yes. God did exemplify womanly characteristics at certain times, but in no way did that suddenly mean he was a totally different sex. Nor does it mean that he was transgender. In summation, God's word is very clear on who he is and what he is about. And he ain't about that! That's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on all the social medias. If you want to support me on Patreon, just go to Patreon slash Do Not Be Deceived. Thanks so much for watching, and you have a blessed day.